So the AI toolkit isn't a feature that you turn on. It's a set of building blocks that you can bring into whatever it is that you're trying to build. And as you'll have seen in the prompt engineering video, there is a certain amount of iteration to this. And so the best way to really start mastering this toolkit is just to dive in, to look at examples and build lots of your own solutions. In the next few videos, we're going to look at examples of building with AI. The use cases we've picked here are designed to cover some of the most common functionality that we see being built in business software. Each of these examples is also copyable as a template. You'll find the links in Glide University in this certification. And you can copy these as many times as you want, follow along, break things, mess around, or just add more features on top. If you can use all of the techniques used in these apps, you'll be well on your way to mastering Glide AI. So the first two examples showcase the use of AI actions in the workflow editor. This is because these use cases require humans to check and edit what the AI creates. Example three, however, is more about enriching and structuring data dynamically in the tables. So it's built primarily with AI computed columns. So we've already mentioned this, but it bears repeating. When building with AI, do not assume that it will get things right. Treat it like a very junior but helpful intern. You wouldn't trust that intern to make important operational decisions about your company, but you would trust that intern to do the work that helps the leaders of your company make better decisions, if that makes sense. So because of this, actions are often a much better way to go with mission critical decisions or data because you can edit the stuff that's created by AI. However, when you're learning and you're messing around, we highly recommend working in the data editor. Just add four or five rows of data and just get building because the column approach is much easier and quicker to experiment with because you see the results right then and there. And when you change prompts, you can see how everything reacts. So the first example is built for field operations. In this example, inspectors spend a lot of time writing and emailing reports while they're on site on their phones, and the maintenance engineers are stuck in an old paper process that needs to be digitized. So the solution is an app that uses AI actions for inspectors to quickly make inspections with audio notes and allows the maintenance team to scan and digitize their paper process. The second example is built for general office admin. In this scenario, a business has a lot of paper receipts and invoices from contractors, and they need to get all of this digitized quickly in their own custom format and structure. And the solution is an app for admins to quickly upload receipts and invoices, sending data to two different tables for business reporting and further use. The final example is built for customer communications. The issue here is really about unstructured data overload. A company needs to prioritize and respond to high priority emails first and gain insights from the unstructured data in the feedback. The solution that we build is an app that enriches these feedback emails with valuable structured data. And then from this, we can triage, build insights and reporting, and even generate auto response draft emails. So that's an overview of the examples. Let's take a closer look now at each one of these in the next few lessons.